Hello. You amazing person. I am Rob, the money gaming guy. I am absolutely freezing in my shed. So today, I'm not going to be hanging around too long. I'll try and get this over done with as quick as possible. I am pursuing my passion of trying to make the car from automation, the car company tycoon game, as fast as possible for driving in BeamNG dot drive it's going well so far this one is damn fast and super fun to drive i think i've got a little bit more progress i can make though but without further ado we're gonna jump over to this car and automation and show you the amazingness please like and subscribe if you like this sort of stuff and here we are in automation and in automation we are luckily get the privilege to look at it closely and all that lovely detail is going on Nice custom front end, lovely. Green and purple paint job, always a beautiful trimmage going on. Nice fence for the boots, and yeah, that's the car's close look. I've got no interior at the moment. Um, I'm definitely planning to put one in there. Uh, keep an eye out for maybe a part two of this video when we put interior in, and maybe try and improve the handling a bit. The handling is very sharp, and it's got that snap point, like, like a, the old classic MR2 or 911. You get in the corner, you're pushing it, you're pushing it. You pushed it too hard and it'll just spin on you. And it's very hard to catch. Possible to catch, but it's not easy to catch. So I might as well start from the scratch and tell you how we got here. 1980 coupe, 2.47 meter wheelbase. Okay, maybe might upgrade it to a bigger wheelbase in the future to see if that helps with our snap angle. As you can imagine, this car is just on some high performance drugs and everything is just cracked right up to the max. So we have got carbon fiber lightness, chassis semi space frame, aluminium chassis material, engine placement is mid longitude. You see it right there, beautiful engine sat in the middle where we like it. Push rod back, push rod front. If I just said it the wrong way around, it's still the same difference. So yeah, this car is made for performance. There's our beautiful engine. It's a bit different. I don't really ever see other creators using boxer engines. I don't know why. Um, they're not bad engines. They're nice and low to the ground and they're quite light. So as you can see, this one is just a nice, simple boxer six engine, a magnesium block, and it's a 3.5 litre with... So I thought this was a shorter stroke. Yeah, it is. Less is shorter stroke. I was right about that. So I've got quite a short stroke compared to my bore size. And that should allow for higher revs and, you know, a bit more tolerance in torque. Um, the lower the stroke, the more torque value you can have. Which is quite fun to play with. Dual overhead cam, four valves, aluminium silicon head material. All the quality is 15.15, by the way. We can probably pop up some grass for you now. And we're hitting 758 brake horsepower at 10,100 revs per minute. 535 newton meters torque at 10,000. It's a very reasonably straight line. It does get a bit wobbly as I'm pushing the engine a bit too hard. Um, but it's good. It, it nice. It's naturally aspirated. So all the lines are clean enough. And you get some good response. In fact, we get 100% response. It's not percent, but we get 100 throttle response from this engine. We do have harmonic dampness so thrown down. I wonder if I could probably could have set that off. I might have been able to get take that off. Not sure, not gonna to touch it. Obviously, harmonic damage will help change the valve, uh, not valves, the revs limit. Um, and if you change the stroke, you can change your torque limit. It's quite useful. The flow's looking okay. Manifold and headers are a bit was a bit hot, but bearable. Got very high compression, obviously, because there's no turbo. We're able to keep a nice high compression, which gives us a good lower end. We're 1400 revs. I can bump that up by 100 if I want to, but I'm going to leave it as it is. It's fine for me. Uh, cam profile will adjust that for you. Springs and lifters are set to so. Um, you've got to find a nice balance point where the horsepower stops jumping about. Valve all the way up. Um, that comes in at. 5,900 revs per minute. That's the VVT, obviously. And obviously, this engine revs up to 10,500. It's a beautiful number to hear. Revving. Here's my time and flow graphs and that. All looking good. I went for quite over-cranked heads and 
stuff to try and get a little bit more push at the top end keep make sure it can do the ten and a half thousand revs no turbocharger direct injection that's per cinnadin it's got race manifold and it's running on ultimate fuel tubular race headers of course dual exhaust bypassed and we got no mufflers on it just a catalytic converter And that's it. You can pause the screen if you'd like to see any more of the crazy stats down here. If you understand a bit more than me and you want to know the, the efficiency of the engine and all that sort of stuff. Um, I just tend to pay attention to the throttle response. If you're building a sports car, you tend to not be paid attention to the other stuff. Apart from lightness. You want a light engine. What does this engine weigh, actually? What does it weigh? Yeah, 126 kilograms. So that's quite a light engine, considering it's got six pistons. And it's a three and a half litre. So yeah, that's the body shape we chose. I did crank out the arches, give it some more width. And that was a... Uh, I didn't really change too much, I was about the body. Made sure the bumpers are sticking out a little bit, because I wanted that old school 90s vibe. And I think I'm getting quite good at the bumpers on that. They look quite nice, those ones. They look pretty tasty. Purple exhaust. Headlights are a bit, a bit fake looking. I don't know. We're getting there. Colour is green and purple. Downforce, we got... Oh, let's go back onto it. It's got like one, two, three... No, is that the same one? One, two... I think I got three in the front. Maybe four, four. Four in the front. One, two, three, four in the back. Lots of downforce. The drive train, rear wheel drive, manual six speed, of course. 250, 248 miles an hour. Banging. 3.4 seconds, not to 62 miles per hour. It said it's not spoiling us. I bet if I just go like this a couple of times, that'll probably jump up to 100. Yeah, see. Oh, well. Um, it probably was sporting us at one point, but it's not anymore. Oh, well. Uh, clutch, race, LSD. That's obviously all to the back wheels. Got sports compound, radial. Tire width is 190 in the front and 225 in the rear. Um, that was... If I change these, I'm more likely to either get loads of understeer or just snap oversteer. And it just, this light, yellow line just pops right up. And it's like, nope, not having any of it. It took me a good fair few times to get this car working. Also, hot tip with your wheels. If you're exporting your car wheels and the wheels are jerking about and bouncing because you've done something weird to the engine. Um, quality, none. I, can't, I, I should find it on the internet. If I remember to, there's a, oh, just looking on the internet, some bloke. In a forum, just kept randomly popping up. It's like, have you tried putting the quality wheels to zero yet? If you're there, man, you watch this video. Well done. You you saved my life. You saved me a good few hours work. I kept changing the wheel size and everything, and then they had to change all the settings and the tune in because you changed the wheel size. It was tedious. It took me hours. But then I thought, look on the internet, and on the internet, one person, only one person, kept popping up saying, turn the wheel quality down. I think what it's to do right is because the game's a simulator, it's only got certain thresholds you can stick to and when you make things better than the game can really handle the computer's like meh meh who huh, meh he who meh like what he what you know it's like what's going on bro what he who and that's why you're getting jiggly wheels that's my theory so when you turn the quality down you bring the wheels back into a threshold the simulator can handle and there you go imagine i might be able to find a way to bump this up a little bit i'll have to keep exporting it and importing it and find its peak but um yeah, I did that. Load of quality. I did lose about 0.10 Gs in the corners. This was doing 1.5 something in the 20 meter circle. But I don't care. I got no jiggly wheels. That's the more important thing. But 17 on those, by the way. And the magnesium rims. Ceramics all around. Uh, two and one piston splits. Yeah, quality. Obviously, all the way up. Yeah, look at this. But it comes down and goes back up and then back down. This was scary. This uh, this is the scary point in driving this car. You can get it so fast around corners, but you've got to be so agile on the turn in. It's a bit too sharp. I need to give the rear end probably a bit more grip. But for now, we're keeping it as it is because that's what you see later on. Race diffuser on this. Uh, no active wing and cooling flaps. Brake flow has been cranked right up. Interiors, race, basic, two seats, uh, quality right up. Obviously, this is to make it as light as possible. I didn't realize you could... I 
forgot you can change this. I wonder if I can make the card lighter by changing the hood. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. I'll have to look into that. Manual rack and pin and traction control. I only put this on. You ever see me racing in this game? I use a T300 RS Eden steering wheel. Um, and I turn all traction aids off this game and beam and G. So it's all raw and I'm learning to drive as fast as I can with no aids. Safety is standards and quality is thrown to fif minus 15. And that is to make it less weight. Less weight is what we're going for here. Optimized weight is obviously been thrown up to the lighter side of things. Weight distribution has been thrown to the front. And I always say this. You go in here, you go to design, you look at your weight, front and rear. I've gone for 50-50 in mine. The car weighs 692 kilograms. Remember, this car has 755, 58, sorry, brake horsepower. It's more brake horsepower than it is lightness. So... It's probably like 1,400 brake horsepower. I don't know. You do the math for me, guys. Put it in the comments, please. What's the power to ton, power to weight ratio of this car? 692 kilograms. Uh, whatever mass to 758 brake horsepower. I think it's going to be something like 13, 1,400 brake horsepower per ton. So, yeah. Rapid. And the idea of keeping it light is so you don't have to add so much horsepower. So then the horsepower isn't just spinning up the wheels to try and get a fast lump moving if you keep the car light you don't have to go so crazy in the power remember that okay so all we got left is we did on the safety all we got left is the suspension and we get to go watch this car go like a lunatic suspension is active sport semi-active dampers and a passive sway bar again i've spent a lot of time trying to tune this car because the slight change in settings will either flick it up or make it have loads of understeer this is what it is, and that's what it's staying like. If we go to here, we get some more beautiful design stats. We can go to sportiness, it's 139. For some reason, grip at the moment on all my cars is low, but everything else is looking amazing on this one. Very good. Got some more stats down here. We need to know them. Performance, 3.4 seconds, not 60 miles an hour. And then the further bit is 1.63 seconds, so you'll be... Going ridiculously fast. Quarter mile is 10 seconds. So it's not... It's, yeah, I'd say it's a 10 second car. If you change the gear quick enough, you can blag it. Quarter mile is 17.10 seconds. So it is still a very, very fun and light, fast car. Markets, we don't really care about them. Design, design stats. Drivability, yeah, it doesn't like me at all. And that's it. We're going to send it around here now. I don't think it's super fast around here. Hence why I want to maybe make this car a bit longer and give it a bit more a bit more cornering abilities one minute 44 seconds still good time still a very very good time issues of the car are very slim which is a uh, always a nice one to see normally you see a lot of issues but apparently just our dampers are a bit hard in this car well there you go over to you now rob so there you have it that's the automation bit over where we get to look at the immense stats of the car and a little final look at the detailing. We're now going to jump over to BMNG where I've pre recorded a beautiful short film for you on my UK map that I'm working on. We've got a total of four cars driving along the roads. I'll be doing a few laps around the bypass. Do enjoy. Thank you very much for sticking by. Like and subscribe if you like this sort of thing because I'm constantly pumping out these cars and I aim to get better and better with each one. And also, if you've got any ideas that you want, throw them in the comments and I'll see if I can rustle them up for you. Enjoy the video. Thank you very much.
There you have it. There was our amazing car mod that we built in automation, the car company tycoon game. And then we exported it to beamng.drive. What did you think? Did you like it? What would you have done different? Is this the sort of car that you'd like to drive? And like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Keep it real, stay safe, and share that love. Bye bye.